Hey folks, so today I'm going to show you how to work with materialized views in Django. So in this example, we have a basic models.py. Now this is under the bookings app. If I take a quick look at my project, uh, you'll see that I have bookings and under bookings, I have models and inside models, I have a few Django models available to me. Okay. So the thing about a materialized view is that it cuts down the cost of running a query on your database. And we're going to be using a Postgres database here that I have set up. One thing you might've noticed is that some of the tables are in different colors, and that's because I set them to be different colors. Why you might ask? It's because I want to be able to focus on these tables. So let's take a look at what our bookings table looks like. You see, it takes a little while to load because I don't have a really great database at the moment. So here, I'm just gonna put this here. This is what it currently looks like. So this contains all the bookings made to our facilities. And I can, of course, go ahead and go to the DDL. I can check if I can just bring up bookings here. I can check, so ID matches to booking ID, facility matches to fac ID, member matches to mem ID, start time and slots are basically the only important pieces of information that the table holds other than basically foreign keys. So here's my problem. The big issue that I have is I need to be able to show a list of all the bookings that guests have made to our different facilities and I'm going to show you what that query looks like. I'm just gonna head over to the query console and start banging out a query. So we are going to select star, and I'm not going to take everything from the bookings table, but I'm using select star because I want code completion better. So here we're going to select star from bookings B and interjoin it with facilities F where F dot fac ID is equal to B dot fac ID. And as you'd expect, that gives us a lot of rows that we frankly don't need. So back to the drawing board. Now we only want all the bookings where the members are guests. So we are going to set the mem ID is equal to zero in our where clause. And that should give us the number of rows that we actually expect, but we want fewer columns. So let's fix that as well. In my select clause, I am going to take F dot name and that is going to be the first field that I'm going to take. So f.name, and I'm going to name it facility name. I'm just going to reformat this text quickly because this is just getting too long. And on to the next column, which is going to be b.starttime. So we want the start time of the booking in question. And after that, what we want is f fac ID as facility ID. This is also present in the bookings uh, B table. And lastly, we are going to go ahead and calculate our end time. Now the end time is going to look something like this. So B dot start time plus an interval of say 30 minutes. And it's going to be multiplied by the number of slots, which are 30 minutes slots. Okay, and we're going to say that this is end time. Everything seems to be fine. The last thing that we're going to do is we're going to do order by, and we're going to order by the start time. Okay, now let's see if that works. All right, so all of that seems to be working. But as you can see, this does take quite a bit of time uh, for it to be rendered. And it's, it's a large view that, that we're looking at. So what we want to do is create a materialized view to encompass this. So here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, create materialized view. Whoops, let me just put that all in capitals. Create materialized view. And we're going to call it guest bookings as I'm just going to reformat that once more so that everything looks good. And this is what we get. And let's see if we can execute that. Once we've executed that, we should be able to see this show up 
in our databases panel. So right now, it's going to introspect the main schema. And once that's complete, we should be able to see it right over here. And that shows us our guests and the facilities that they are using. Now you might question whether or not the materialized views had any effect on query time. And you can see here that we have around 800 milliseconds in terms of execution for just selecting the query and about 641 milliseconds for when we are getting something from a materialized view. So overall, it does decrease the amount of time a little bit, but optimizations can be made. All right, so now it's time for us to basically encapsulate this materialized view inside of a Django model. And it's going to be like any other model that it's going to inherit from models.model. Now, what I often like doing is just taking the database panel and just uh, undocking it and putting it next to the place where I'm coding so that I have a better idea of where things are and just be able to copy the different data types correctly into the model. Because this is going to be a model that is not managed by Django. So if you see in the bookings table, we have a managed is equal to false. This is also going to have a managed is equal to false inside of the meta class. So copying all of this down, we have to make sure that we have the right type. So for example, with facility name, I've made sure that the max length is 100. For facility ID, it will just be a normal integer field. Adding the start time is simply a models.datetime field, and we're going to set it to the right database column. And of course, last but not least, we're going to add end time, which is also the same type as start time. Now in the meta class, we're going to make sure that the managed flag is set to false, and we're going to tell Django what the database table is. And lastly, I'm just going to move this back to being a pinned item on the side panel or on the dock. Okay, so now that we have everything ready, let's try this model out inside of our Python console. I'm just going to invoke my search everywhere, type in console, and then just head over to Python or debug console. And uh, that should open up the console. If you ever need to restart it, you can hit that green button. Okay, so I'm going to start by importing the model that I want to play around with. And from the looks of things, I feel like I made a mistake with naming this model. So I'm just going to stop it and then uh, just rename it. And just as a side note here, I am using Alt Enter to rename uh, this class, but since I haven't really used it anywhere, it's not going to be a problem, but I just do that as a matter of habit. So heading back to our console, this time we're just going to import guest bookings, and then we are going to start playing around with it. So we are just going to get all of the guest bookings uh, for this console session. And that's going to take some time to load, but we're just going to see what happens if we try to get the first one. And we run into our first problem here, which is that Guest bookings does not have an ID or it just doesn't have a primary key. It doesn't have to be a column named ID, but Django expects it to be a column named ID. So there are two ways to solve this. One is to create a new column called ID or just use something else as a primary key. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to use book ID as primary key. But in order to do that, we need to add book ID again to our materialized view. So here, I'm just going to create the materialized view again, and let's see what happens. We can head over to output, and we see that error, guest bookings already exist. So we need to drop this materialized view first. We can do that with drop materialized view, guest bookings, and executing that will drop our materialized view. We can get rid of that statement and uncomment the first statement that we created and just execute that. Once that has been executed, we can just take a look at the newly created materialized view. 
we can just get rid of this statement and just do a normal query where I select everything from guest underscore bookings and I have the displays in line so that's easier to show you as well. So coming back to our guest bookings model, we can just add a new field here called booking ID, which is going to be of models.integer field. We're going to give it a database column. And we're going to set the primary key to being true. With all of that stuff out of the way, let's open up the Django console once more and try things out. I'm going to go ahead and just import my guest bookings model. I'm going to get all the bookings from guest bookings and then I'm going to try and look at the first one. If I try to look at the attributes of the first guest bookings, I can go to bookings zero dot facility name and I can see that this table, or rather this materialized view, is working as it's supposed to. The last thing I'm going to do is create a unique index on this materialized view based on top of book ID. All I need to supply is the column that I want to create the index on, the index name, in which case it's going to be idx underscore gb underscore book ID. I just name my indexes this way. And once that's done, I'm just going to execute that. Creating this new index should cause PyCharm to refresh the database schema and just the properties of all the different things inside of the database. And we should see changes in our materialized view. So here we see book ID as a primary key and also we have our new index. The reason I wanted to do this is because when we use the get method inside of our objects property uh, of a model manager, we can use book ID here as a reference to the object that we want, or in this case, booking ID. I just happen to know that booking ID 10 is a valid booking with a guest. So that allows me to retrieve the object very quickly and it uses the index. One of the coolest things about Django is that you can actually see the queries that have been generated. So in this case, we are just going to redo a few of our steps from our last console session, and then we're going to take a look at Django's connections.queries property. So here, we're just going to look for the same ID as we did before. So in this case, booking ID is 10. So now that we have done the query and it looks like the object is the right one, we are going to import connections from django.db and hopefully we're going to, or rather connection, and we're going to do connection.queries. And this is a property that shows you all the queries that have been done till now. So what I'm going to do is copy this entire string and paste it into my database console. Now you might think that this query is a little weird and the truth is that it is. And this is something that you need to learn about ORMs, which is that the queries that are generated are not often what you might think. Now coming back to why we created an index in the first place, if we go in and explain this query, we're going to see that there is an index scan, which means that you get a faster execution time when it comes to executing this query. Now, the thing that I'm showing you in terms of the plan is a PyCharm feature, but you can also use the regular explain keyword to get the same thing, but it just doesn't look as nice. All right, one last thing before I go, you need to regularly refresh your materialized views. So the way that you do that is like this. Refresh materialized view, and then you put in your view, and that's it, really and that should refresh your materialized view. Now, the thing is, when you're refreshing your materialized view, this will cause a lock in your database because that view is being written to. So what you wanna do is you want to do it concurrently. This way, you'll be still able to read from your materialized view, although the refresh might be a little slower. 
Well, folks, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, definitely hit that like button. If you loved it, definitely subscribe for more videos. If you have any questions, please leave us a comment down below. And I'll see you in the next one.